of seawater. That salt encrusts the fuel rods like a cocoon, preventing cooling water from cooling the rod. When the rod hits 5,000 degrees, it starts to melt, hydrogen gas is released, and if there's a spark, you get a hydrogen gas explosion, which blows the whole spent fuel pond into the air. It's very similar to what happened at Chernobyl. In terms of that insulating factor of the salt, if they can switch over to fresh water for continued cooling efforts at these reactors, is it likely that that will, I guess, dilute that salt crust enough or, 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 or dilute the impact of what they've been doing with the seawater enough to undo some of that insulating damage that's been done? That's right. The hope use is to use fresh water rather than seawater, but realize that they're making this up as they go along. Take any nuclear engineering textbook. Go to the last chapter for accident scenarios. This is not in the book. We're witnessing a science experiment with humans, us, as the guinea pig. They're literally making this up as we go along. We've never seen this before in a nuclear accident of this magnitude. What do you make of the news that power, electrical power, has been restored to the reactors? Are you able to tell enough about how much damage has been done to the systems that you would be hooking electrical power up to to know whether or not this is going to be a game changer in terms of wrapping this crisis up? The problem is that they have electrical cables going into the units, but they cannot turn on the pumps. In fact, they turned on the pumps at Unit 2, and it didn't work. The problem is there's hydrogen gas, and a spark, by turning on the light switch, could set off the hydrogen gas. So until they get the pumps going, we have to rely on the firemen. And nowhere in the textbook do they say that firemen, the local firemen, are the last resort to put out a nuclear accident. This is unprecedented. So we rely on the local firemen to put water on the site because the pumps are not yet turned on. It's very dicey. They're waiting to see whether or not they can turn on the pumps, and Unit 2's pumps didn't work. Inadvertently, um, tonight's show, we've talked about the BP oil disaster. We've talked about the Japan disaster. We keep talking about, um, we actually talked about safety problems at Diablo Canyon. Tonight's show has been all about making good policy and making adjustments in future planning to reflect past disasters. You are a futurist. You are a theoretical physicist. When you look at the situation in Japan, clearly there has been a lack of imagination about how much can go wrong. How do you think we ought to start to plan a safer future based on what's happened at Fukushima.